Dallas Theological Seminary's Chapel Podcast. Good morning. In my church ministries course with adults this last spring, uh, one of my male graduating students commented, none of my friends have ministry jobs. I was concerned, and so was he. In 2009, Barna reported that a downturn in the economy has negatively affected Protestant churches to the tune of about 7%, which translates into reduced spending, eliminating the non-essentials in ministry, smaller facility budgets, and let's face it, waiting to hire staff. Our nation is in a crazy time, and I don't know if we are going to go back to financially what we faced before or if we're going to have to get used to the new normal. But his comments reminded me, brought me back to 1972 when my husband, David, was graduating with a master's in electrical engineering from Texas A&M and he sent out probably 60 resumes, not a single response. But within a couple of months, through a professor and some networking, he found a great job here in Dallas, which led him to another job that he's been in for 40 years and a job that he loves. My student's comment also reminded me of my years in the 1980s when I was here as a student. I wasn't the first woman here, but I was among those first women. And I was a volunteer Bible teacher here in the Metroplex in women's uh, parachurch Bible studies. And I came to DTS just to be a better Bible teacher for them. Vocational ministry had, uh, did not cross my mind uh, because there weren't really uh, positions for women on church staffs or uh, in those kinds of vocational uh, places. The, the future for women was very uncertain. And people would ask the question, which was, what are you doing at seminary? And there was kind of this little hint like, you know, you're spending a lot of money and this is a lot of time and are you sure this is really a good investment in what you're doing? The prospects are pretty dim. Well, I had to chuckle when I moved into my DTS office in 2005 up there on the third floor of of Todd after having been invited onto full-time faculty. Wonder of wonders. I was coming off of about 15 years of experience in vocational ministry. And I hung in my office, and you're welcome to come and see it, a painting, and emboldened across the bottom is Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Well, if you have your Bibles, I'd encourage you to turn there, and we're going to do just a little bit of work in the time that we have in Jeremiah 29. And as you're turning there, I want to just, verse 1 gives us the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah, it says, this is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles, the priests, the prophets, the other people, carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. So what we have here in Jeremiah 29, the context is a letter from Jeremiah to the exiles. Now certainly, as we think about these exiles, the adjustments that they were required to make uh, must have been overwhelming. They're uprooted from the place where they were born. They are forced to travel across a uh, Middle Eastern desert, probably walking about 700 miles. And they are leaving their beautiful home. If you've been to Israel, you know what it's like, the the hills and the trees. And um, they left their temple, they left their home, their language, to go to this new place, Babylon. Strange customs, strange language, the landscape oddly flat and featureless and dry. Sounds a little bit like Texas, doesn't it? The weather so different, the faces unrecognized and unrecognizing. 
Their exile was an extreme form of what we all experience when we enter into changes in life. And Lord willing, we're not going into exile, but we will probably be required to adjust to some extreme changes. Uh, probably you came from a place where you were uh, hopefully more uh, comfortable to the demanding world of seminary. And you'll be here two years, four years, six years, eight years, I don't know. But you're going to, Lord willing, go out into the demanding world of ministry. You're going to find your way to different homes and different states and some of you across the world into different countries. And all of these changes are made more tenuous by the tsunami-like changes that we're experiencing in our world today and by the 7% downturn in resources for churches and ministries. But amidst the changes that the exiles faced and that we face as well, God promises, he says, if you will follow me, if you will walk with me, I have plans for you, I have good plans for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a future and a hope. And I know that waiting on those plans is often exasperating, especially when sometimes you have no idea what it is that God has in store for you. But what is it that God would have us do as we wait? Well, Jeremiah's letter has some wonderful advice for us. If you look at verse 5, Jeremiah tells the uh, exiles, and by the way, the false prophets back in Israel had told them that they would only be there a couple years. Don't worry about putting down roots because it's just going to be a quick time. Jeremiah said, no, you're going to be there longer than that. You're going to be there 70 years. Jeremiah said to them, in Babylon, build houses and settle down. Build houses and settle down. My dad was a Coast Guard officer, and so every couple of years we moved somewhere. But my mother did one thing so well. Whenever she moved us into a home, whenever we moved, she always made it beautiful, like we were going to be there forever. And I would encourage you, as however long you're gonna be here, uh, ring out this experience, savor the opportunities, build your house and settle down wherever it is that God has you. Verse five continues, plant gardens and eat what they produce. Put down roots. My mother planted gardens, my father as well, when, wherever we were so that we could have fruits and, and fresh fruits and vegetables. But I think he's saying to us, be productive parts of the community, whether it's this community here or the church where you find yourself or your neighborhood, put down roots. In verse six, he says, marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Now, if you're single, I'm not advocating that you find a mate while you're here, especially if just because it's going to look good on your resume, it's really not a good reason to get married. But I will say that if you do believe that God would want you to go through ministry with a life partner, this is a great place to find one. Because here in a concentrated space, you have brothers and sisters who are sold out to Jesus, probably more so than any other space you'll ever be in again. So it's a good place, although it's not a good reason to marry. If, if everybody married, we wouldn't have our John Stotts and our Amy Carmichaels and our Abe Caravellas. If you are married, I'm not advocating you have children while you're here. Uh, do that as, as is wise for you. But I would advocate this, and I think what, what Jeremiah, the heart of what he's saying is invest in people. Invest in family and community. Uh, it's tempting to stay aloof when you know you're just going to be somewhere for a short time. Don't do that. Connect well, um, connect in meaningful relationships with your brothers and your sisters because this is great training ground for the future. And I can assure you when you go out there to look for ministry positions, one of the things they will be looking for are your people skills. Finally in verse seven, he says, also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. 
Well, remember where the exiles are living. They are to pray for pagan Babylon. But I think the principle here is that wherever you are, seek the best for that place and throw yourself into the place where you find yourself. This is God's place for you right now. Jeremiah said to the exiles, while you wait, build. Put down roots, invest, settle in. And I think God says the same thing to us. While we wait for his plans to unfold, build. Well, after hearing the pessimistic comments of my student about none of his friends having ministry jobs, uh, at graduation time, my ears were tuned to what was going on in the life of our graduates. And I have to tell you, I was pleasantly surprised. Over and over, I heard of the places our grads are being called to minister. At the barbecue, we sat with a young man and his family, and he's being called to be a senior pastor up in a church in the Northeast. I wrote a letter for a student who's, uh, who wants to teach the Bible in secondary school and is very excited about the possibility. A young man told me that he, June 1st, started as director, as, as an executive director of a marriage mentoring ministry. And one of my women students uh, told me that her part-time job had turned into a full-time ministry opportunity where she is helping identify children, third world needy children, find, building schools for them, finding sponsors for them, and introducing them to Christ through those uh, venues. I heard about all kinds of opportunities and doors that God was opening and my pessimistic student, well, he's headed off to the north to get married, and I'm praying that he'll find a position, and I think he will in time. But regardless, we have God's promises. His promise that as we follow him, as we walk with him, he has sweet, good plans, different for all of us, but plans to prosper us and not to harm us. Plans to give us a hope and a future. But in the meantime, while we wait, build. Father, I ask that you would help us as we wait in these difficult times for the world, that you would help us to know that you are with us and that equipping for your work and your ministry is, is what you want so that we can go out in those places that are so needed, uh, needy of Christ. And Father, I do pray over each of my brothers and sisters here that you will give them perseverance, that you will give them the resources that they need, and that you will open the doors for them that you have planned. They will walk with you faithfully and find a life of ministry for your glory and for their joy. In Jesus' name, amen.